Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to episode 7 of the companion series. My name is Mahir Qadri and today we'll be discussing the life and key incidents of Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu. Bilal radiallahu anhu was one of the most trusted and loyal companions. He was also the first muezzin of Islam. He was chosen as the first muezzin by the Prophet sallallahu himself. Bilal radiallahu anhu has a very interesting background that we often fail to talk about. His father and his mother were both very prominent people before they became slaves. His father, Rabah, was actually an Arab and was not from Abyssinia. His mother, whose name was Hamama, was actually a princess in Abyssinia. They were both taken as slaves in the year of the elephant. Hence, Bilal radiallahu anhu was actually born in Makkah, but born to parents who, although were not born as slaves, but were taken as slaves. So Bilal radiallahu anhu grew up as a slave in the Arab world his entire life. Bilal radiallahu anhu fell into the hands of the royals of Makkah because he was well known for his abilities, his strength, and his intelligence. Bilal radiallahu anhu was also a very handsome man. He is described by Ad-Dahabi radiallahu anhu as being dark, muscular, and having hazel eyes. He was such a handsome, strong, and intelligent man that he was given to the royal classes of Makkah. He was given to a man named Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Umayyah ibn Khalaf was one of the staunchest enemies of the Prophet ﷺ. One day, Bilal radiallahu anhu heard Umayyah talking about the Prophet ﷺ, and he understood from Umayyah's talk that the Prophet ﷺ is calling to Tawheed, to the oneness of God. This is our fitra and what we already believe inside of us. We are already tuned to one God. So even though they were slandering the Prophet ﷺ, Bilal radiallahu anhu believed in the Prophet ﷺ and his message. Torture was heaped on Bilal radiallahu anhu, who responded with repeating the words, Ahad and Ahad, meaning one God, one God. This is very profound. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu asked the Bilal radiallahu anhu later on in life that once Bilal radiallahu anhu had become established as a great Muslim leader, he said, why is it that you only said one God, one God? Bilal radiallahu anhu replied saying, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, had I known anything other than one God, one God, I would have said it. But this was all I knew about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for saying Ahad and Ahad, meaning one God, one God, Bilal radiallahu anhu would be tortured and be pushed almost to death over and over again. First, they tied him up in the house and they deprived him of food and drink. So they starved him and dehydrated him. And they would put the idols in front of his face and say, kiss the idol, worship the idol, worship Allah and al Uzza. These are the names of the idols. They would humiliate him and they would spit on him. They would refer to him with a derogatory term saying, you son of a black woman. What they were saying to Bilal radiallahu was that even though your father was an Arab, it doesn't matter. That's why this term is so offensive. Then Bilal radiallahu anhu was also dragged in the desert. Umayyah ibn Khalaf actually put a collar on him and dragged him out in public. He spat on him and humiliated him and tortured him. He was also whipped in front of everyone. They tortured him in front of the other slaves so that no one would follow his example. Bilal radiallahu anhu was between unconsciousness and consciousness, but he still kept saying Ahad and Ahad, meaning one God, one God. Finally, they even tried to kill Bilal radiallahu anhu by having other slaves push a big stone onto his back so that it would crush him to death. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu rushed to purchase his freedom. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came to Umayyah and said to him, How much do you want for this slave? How much do you want for him? Umayyah bin Khalaf said 10 dinars, which was a huge price for a slave at that time. Without thinking, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu gave him 10 dinars. Umayyah laughed and said, If you would have argued with me a little bit and tried to negotiate, I would have given him to you for even one dinar. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu responded, saying, By Allah, if you were to sell him for 100 dinars, I still would have purchased his freedom. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu paid that huge price for Bilal radiallahu anhu, some people said that Abu Bakr radiallahu was only doing this to show off or there was something between him and Bilal radiallahu anhu that he owed him something and that's why he freed him, which obviously is not true. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu when he freed him. He revealed in Surah Al-Layl that he only spent to please Allah and not for anything else. There's no worldly gain out of this. Umar radiallahu anhu used to call Bilal radiallahu anhu Sayyiduna, meaning our master, who was freed by a Sayyiduna, meaning our master again. So just observe this shift in their mentality. Umar radiallahu anhu, who was from a prime lineage, calling a former slave his master. When the Muslims settled in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ instituted them to Adhan. Prophet ﷺ appointed Bilal radiallahu anhu as the Muazzin, who is the official who calls the worshippers to prayers. Bilal radiallahu anhu had a resonant, high-pitched voice, which had a hypnotic quality that exerted a strange pull on hearts. Bilal radiallahu anhu lived with the Prophet ﷺ, witnessing all the battles with him, including Battle of Badr, Uhud, Trench, and other battles as well. In the Battle of Badr, he killed his former master, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, saying that I won't survive if he survives. After the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ asked Bilal radiallahu anhu to ascend to the top of the Kaaba and to give the Adhan. This was the first time the Adhan was heard within Islam's holiest city, which is Mecca. Bilal radiallahu anhu was not the Muazzin because he was black. He was a Muazzin despite being black, and his color didn't matter in Islam. Now I'd like to point out two interesting incidents that occurred. Once the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh Bilal, what special deeds have you done that I heard sounds of your walking steps ahead of me in paradise during Miraj? Bilal radiallahu anhu said, I don't do anything worth mentioning except that whenever I perform wudu during the day or night, I prayed after that ablution as much as was written for me. And this is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. And the second incident is that once the King Naj Najashi of Habasha sent three spears as a gift to the Prophet ﷺ. He gave one to Umar radiallahu anhu, he gave one to Ali radiallahu anhu, and he gave the last one to Bilal radiallahu anhu, who used the spear as a sutra. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, Bilal radiallahu anhu was never feeling the same again. A day after the Prophet Sallallahu death, Bilal went to make the usual adhan for morning prayer. While giving this adhan, he cried. He managed to finish the rest of the adhan in a low voice. After this, Bilal radiallahu anhu stopped calling the adhan in Medina. After some time, he left Medina because he couldn't bear living without the Prophet Sallallahu So he joined the army towards Syria. After the victory in Syria, when Umar radiallahu anhu visited Syria, the Muslims requested Umar radiallahu anhu to persuade Bilal radiallahu anhu to call one adhan for them. The Caliph, Umar radiallahu anhu, called Bilal radiallahu when it was time for prayer and requested him to call the adhan. Bilal radiallahu anhu agreed and he gave the adhan. When he was giving the adhan, the, all the Muslims began to cry. Likewise, once in his lifetime he came to Medina and the grandchildren of the Prophet wasalam, asked him to give the adhan. And out of love for them, he gave the azan. All of the people from Medina came out to listen. They cried and remembered the days of the Prophet ﷺ. Bilal radiallahu anhu was given the honor of giving azan for the first time in all three holy cities of the Muslims, which is Medina, Makkah, and Al-Quds. He died in Halab, Aleppo, which is in Syria, and he is also buried there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us listen to his azan on the Day of Judgment and in Jannah. Ameen. So this concludes this episode. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.